Right, in this recording I'm going to tell you how to convert a motion capture file in C3D format into a BIP file which you can use in 3ds Max. So the first thing to do is to create a biped which we're going to export out to Motion Builder as the um, as the main template. So we'll just go into here, set up a biped that's about the right size. 170 centimeters. Make sure you take it out of figure mode before you send it. And the other thing we need to do is we need to make sure the arms are straight out in a T pose. So I'm just going to rotate them around, uh, doing it by eye, but using the grid there just to make sure they're horizontal enough. Motion Builder will throw up errors if they're uh, too far out. So I've now got a biped. I'm going to export that as a FBX file folder here. I'll call that biped max. And just OK that and that. So now we go to Motion Builder and we're going to import our biped. Open our biped. and open, open there. When you're using Motion Builder it has um, weird settings for navigating the viewport so just go settings interaction mode and choose 3ds Max there and OK that and you can use your normal buttons for moving around uh, the viewport which makes life a lot easier. So the first thing we have to do with this thing is we have to characterize it. So down here in your asset browser, click on characters and drag a character into the scene. And then we have this thing which we have to use to define all the positions of all the different bones. Now, we can do it here and we can do it down here as well. And I'm going to start off down here. So double click on character here and then go to character definition. And we need to define the pelvis. And if I go down to the base, folder here and drag this down. You can see I've got all the different settings listed there. I've also got them up here in the character definition thing. Just select BIP there and right click and go expand branches. Give ourselves a bit more space here so we can see them all. Uh, this BIP01 is the COM from our biped and that's what we're going to use for the hips. So I'll drag that onto there. And you can see up here now the hips have been uh, mapped on. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to map the rest of them on now. You can actually double click up here, it's a lot quicker. So double click on the first spine bone and go and select this one. It's the one that's shaped like a little uh, triangular shape there. Um, and then click this button to go in and do the other spine bones. Starting at the bottom, double click there, click there, double click, select double click select and when you've got all the spine bones just click this one to go back to full body view I'm going to do the legs so double click on the thigh bone and select the, sim the same thigh bone you'll notice it selects both together automatically that's because this little mirror button here is on so double click the calf and select this one double click the foot and select this one Go up to here, we're going to select the shoulder by going into this little one here. We only need the first shoulder bone. Double click that and select the shoulder bone. You can see it selects the mirror up there. We go back up to the full view. Uh, double click the arm bone and select that one. That arm bone there. Didn't mean to double click it. If you double click it, you lose, it selects it all down here. So I've selected the bone properties now, I just need to double click the character properties, so I've got them back there. Uh, double click the hand bone, select the hand bone there. Um, and the head bone, well, let's do the neck first, go in here for the neck bone. Just choose the bottom one, because we've only got one neck bone, and select that little tiny bone in there. And up, and select the head bone. 
that one there. Now that one is fully characterized at the moment, but I've got a couple of extra options I need to put in, which I'm going to do down here because it's easier to uh, select them. So sliding down here a bit further, expanding up the auxiliary button here. I'm just going to put in my toes and my fingers. So from here, uh, on the left arm, I've got finger zero, which I'm going to map down onto left finger base. And right finger zero, I'm going to map onto right finger base. And then for the toes, I've got lots of toe bones because that's the default that um, biped gives you, but I'm only interested in the first bone. Select that one and drop it onto left toe base. Um, right toe zero goes onto right toe base. Now the whole character is fully mapped. The little tick there tells us that it's uh, correct. If that's yellow, it will come up with a warning when you hover over it, and if it's red, there's a big problem. But this is OK. So what I need to do now is just click Characterize here and choose Biped to tell Motion Builder what kind of thing it is. And now I've created a Biped, uh, a Motion Builder version of Biped. So I'm just going to save that out, and you can use this file for any future mocap conversion. So this is an important one to save. File, save as, and I'll call that one Biped Motion Builder. Save. Just save all of those. Okay, so the next thing is to bring our C3D file into Motion Builder and get Motion Builder to understand how that works. So I'm just going to start with a new file and go to uh, Motion File Import bring in my C3D file. Make sure you have Create Optical Segments ticked and leave, make sure that one is unticked and then Import and you will see all of the data appears here and you can see the character moving a few spurious uh, markers there as well Okay, so the first thing to do is to position this data properly. So, if you look, turn around to the side, you can tell by looking at the feet which way the character is facing. So the two dots there are the heel and the foot, and this one at the front is the toe, and you can see that the character is coming down there and the toes are sticking out. So at the moment, the character is facing backwards. So I can pick up this control object here, and I can use W and E and R just like I do in 3ds Max to move that around. So I'm going to move it back a little bit and rotate it round. Uh, you'll notice you get to 180 degrees, it flips over the little green gizmo, so it's easy to see. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate. And then we're going to line it up on the major axis of the grid, which is this slightly less grey one. I'm going to make it so that, that slightly less grey line is between the two feet. Uh, just have a check that it's on the floor. Yeah, it's pretty close to the floor. We'll see how that works when we get our actor in. So we've got uh, the motion data in a sensible place. Next we go down to here and under the characters template folder there we drag an actor into the scene. And you can see this is our actor character. And we're going to rescale this to make sure that all the markers look like they're positioned onto the actor's body. We start off by picking up the pelvis and we're going to move the pelvis into position, roughly into position there. And what I'm aiming to do is get the pelvis so that the markers that go around the waist or the pelvis area of the actor are around the pelvis area here. So I'm just going to look at the names of some of these markers. You can see it down here. RASI is one of the uh, hip markers. If I look at this one, this one is sternum, so it's actually a bit low down because the sternum is up there. But the sternum is very much part of the upper body, so I want to make sure that that is not around the pelvis area. And this one is around the pelvis area, so that's a fairly good match. Okay. I'm just going to go into x-ray mode so you can go to display x-ray and you can see you can toggle between the different modes of control A just means that you can see the markers a little bit better and a little bit more clearly I'll probably pop in and out of x-ray mode a few times 
Right, I'm actually going to go into a different display mode. I'm just going to go models only, so I can select the whole actor, and then go back to uh, X-ray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale the entire actor down so that it's roughly in proportion with the uh, original actor. So I use R for scale. I'm just going to use the, the middle part of the gizmo there to scale uniformly and uh, scale the character until the legs and arms, particularly the, the height of the arms and the shoulders, are about right. Okay, so that's a fairly close match because you can see the markers on top of the shoulders and the arms there are all roughly the right height and the markers on the feet are about right as well. Okay. I can double click to deselect at any time. So next thing is I'm just going to go through and do some fine adjustments. Um, I'm going to do this uh, in high speed mode so you don't have to listen to me talking the whole time but you can watch and follow uh, yourself At this point it's good to note that rotating the shoulders uh, in a particular way helps you with the setup and helps make the final mocap a bit more accurate. So I'm just going to select one of the shoulders. I'm going to rotate it up about 10 degrees before I position the arm. And you can see uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the viewport the Z angle changes as I do this. So I'm going to go roughly 10 degrees up there and there. And then I can rotate the arm back down again, and this gives a more accurate uh, position. The other thing that's worth noting is that the elbow joint here on the actor is actually horizontal, whereas in a real person it lies back about 20 degrees. So I'm just going to use local here to make sure I'm rotating in the correct axes. And I'm just going to rotate this arm backwards 20 degrees-ish. And again, I'm looking at the little number down here to tell me how far it is and rotate the hand back uh, to a horizontal position. Uh, same on this side. So rotate this down 10 degrees-ish, about the same as it was before, and then rotate back 20 degrees and flatten out the hand. The rest will proceed in high speed again. Okay, now I've got to a position where I think the character has got markers positioned all over the body uh, in roughly the same positions as they would have been on the original actor. Alright, the next thing to do is to tell Motion Builder what each of the markers does so that the markers can drive the actor. 
Um, you'll see the actors in a slightly different position uh, to when you saw it just now. That's because uh, I realized I've been aligning the actor to the wrong set of mocap data. It was unclean data. Um, so this one has gone through exactly the same process to align it to a cleaned set of data. And it's a slightly different pose. But don't worry, the process is the same. So to tell Motion Builder what each of these markers does, we need to generate a marker set. So under Actors here, make sure you have your actor selected and double click. And then you get this actor settings dialog here. Click marker set and create. And you get a series of places on the actor where you can put a set of markers. Now I'm just going to go around and select markers in a set. Uh, I'm just going to go into x-ray mode using control A so I can pick out the markers it more easily. I'm going to select the head ones. I'll turn off the gizmo there. Select the head ones. If you select anything wrong just use control, keep using control to add or subtract a selection. Uh, I'm going to choose, uh, actually I'm going to expand the scene up first, expand branches, uh, and then when I select them, you can see them in the navigator here. You drag those across onto the head. Got one shoulder marker, so I'm going to drag that one across onto the appropriate shoulder, and I like to keep the viewport facing the same way as the uh, little guy down here in the, in the window so I don't get confused between left and right. So for the upper arm, you choose upper arm there and the elbow. Um, that's to help you define the upper arm because it's uh, more critical for the soles later on. So I drag that onto the upper arm. Same here for those ones. Drag them onto the other upper arm. The lower arm, there's just one additional marker there. Drag onto the lower arm. And the hand, you see there's three on each hand, so we'll just grab each of those three and drag that onto the hand. And each of those three, and drag it onto the hand. Then for the upper body, just have to be a little bit careful of which ones of these are for the hips and which ones are for the upper body. So I tend to go in around the hip level first and start looking to see what they are. So that one there is sternum, which should normally be a bit higher up, but that's fine. We'll select that there. This one here is T10, which is one of the back ones. This one here is RPSI, which is a hip one. So I'm just going to deselect that one. Uh, and then these ones, there's two on the back and one on the front, are fairly obviously upper body ones. So drag that set onto the upper body. And then get the remaining four around here, there's four hip ones. And drag them onto the lower body. For the thighs, I'm going to choose the thigh one and the knee one to give us better definition on the upper leg. Drag them onto there. And then for the lower leg, just one again, just like on the lower arm. The foot ones, you've got two, you've got an ankle and a heel. So we select both of those and drag them onto the foot. And then just one for each toe. Like so. Now we have a fully defined marker set. You can see all the markers have little dots on them. <coughs> The moment of truth is when you press the active button here and you should see your character doing animation. Okay. Now there is a slight problem with the left leg here. You can see the left leg twists all the way around at this point here. Boom. There we go. Um, and that's due to 
getting the motion builder is getting a little bit confused about a marker that is not quite cleaned up properly and it's this one here you can see uh, if I carry on through the animation you can see that that one gets left behind um, so I'm going to select it it says it's a left thigh marker so I'm going to add it onto my left thigh marker set here uh, and then the animation should be a lot more stable Go, no weird twisting. So now we've got the mocap data onto our actor. I'm going to show you how to get it onto the biped. Right, to get this onto a biped, we need to bring the biped for Motion Builder that we saved in earlier. So we're going to go File, Merge. and merge the file in. You'll notice that everything collapses around this point. That's not a problem. All it is is that the data, the animation data has come in with this and the actor's got a little bit confused about what it's supposed to do. So where it says take 01 here, just go down and choose the mocap file. Yeah, the t and the time has changed as well. So we're going to change this back to 100 FPS, which is our mocap data settings go up to the 880 which is the thing and from it was 450 wasn't it yeah so 450 at this end so now we can see our actors mocap is working uh, and this one here is coming it's already got a character associated to it here uh, so go in and select the character and then up here you've got the motion source at the moment it's set to none if you just click that and choose actor and you can now see that the skeleton is doing the same motion as the actor now we need to at the moment this is just retargeted straight from the actor onto the biped skeleton what we need to do is we need to bake the motion onto the bones of the skeleton so we can save it out. So that's very easy. We have a character selected here. We go on to double click on character. With our character selected here, we go on to character settings and we go plot character. We plot it onto the skeleton and we make sure that this is set to 25 frames per second so it ma matches our max file. And we go plot very quick process. Now the data is all attached to the skeleton. If I click any of the skeleton bones you can see there's keyframes there. So what I need to do now is I need to export that. So I'll go to my scene dialog here, expand up the BIP. What I want to do is just select the BIP, right click on there and go select branches and that will select my entire skeleton. Then I go file save selection and I save this out as gunshot plotted plotted or baked just means the same thing save that and what I'm going to do here is make sure that I'm only saving out the actual mocap data so turn off take one which was that funny little one where the character collapsed in the corner and just leave the mocap running there click save and we can go back to max and bring it in this is the exact same max file I started with with the biped that I exported to motion builder so I now go to my file menu import and I choose gunshot plotted open that Make sure it says add and update animation here and then click OK. And now your character of course it's way off in the distance on the frames because it started at frame 450. We've baked that down to 25 frames a second so it'll be a lot earlier than that. But you can see it goes up to there. So to make that happen in the right place I'm just going to select the entire biped can see all my keyframes here 
here's a handy little hint if you right click on the uh, timeline go configure show selection range you can actually see when you select your keyframes a little range bar at the bottom here which helps you pick all the keyframes up and move them back to zero and you can see that it ends on frame 130 so let's change our ending to 130 and then we're going to click on our biped go save file uh, and we're going to make a um, gunshot bit file click save just to prove it's worked let's create a new biped let's go into our motion panel open go to gunshot and load in the bit file and you can see that now both bipeds are doing the same gunshot motion the end